Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Mob Psycho 100, Season 1, Episode 5. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, we're immediately picking up in the aftermath of last episode, and Taruki's took it upon himself that he's going to fight uh, Mob. And as Dimple kind of puts it, it's like, right, He's this is the first time he's ever come across someone else. He's kind of been able to be this big fish in a small pond situation that he's able to reign supremacy because all he's ever done is fight average normal humans. And now he's having to fight someone of equal power and nothing he's doing is working against Mob. It's interesting when we kind of learn more about his powers, especially like how his fast movements is him using telekinesis on himself, which I thought was so interesting, which even Mob's like, I don't do it just because because it makes me nauseous but I thought that was so fascinating because obviously like you can control the speed of like an object or whatever with telekinesis but I've rarely ever seen it get used as like a a a movement a flash step of sorts I've never seen it utilized like that not saying it's never been utilized like that but this is the first time I've ever seen someone utilize it like that because I've seen it like okay you'll levitate and kind of fly but like to full blown give yourself super speed like that is interesting. And that's how he's always overwhelmed his enemies. He uses telekinesis for super speed and then he uses psycho fist to like take down his opponents. But that's not working on Mob. I mean, Mob is taking the hit. He's blocking some of the debris that Toruki uh, like sends flying his way with just like a barrier. Uh, some of it seems like he's trying. Other times it just seems like, no, it's just like a self-defense thing of like, I think there were times he wasn't even holding up his hand, just the barrier was there, so he's just doing it with his mind. But again, when he holds up his hand, it's meant to like make it focus more. But he's not trying because he doesn't want to fight. But Turuki wants to fight because it's like he needs to stop this now. He needs to subjugate Turuki. Uh, Turuki needs to subjugate uh, Mob because it's like if I don't nip this in the bud now, it questions my my hierarchy in this this kind of uh, well throne that I kind of made for myself um but like I said it's interesting because Mob is getting hit but he's not really sustaining any damage or maybe he's just used to taking a beating because of like his lack of willing to fight which we know uh I love the whole thing of like right you're like oh some some ancient psychic must have come to him because not ancient psychic but some older psychic that's not in his life came to him when he was younger but I did think it was interesting it's like well we know Mobs had his powers ever since he was like, like way younger and I was like well with the way he's looking now character model wise it looks like it's not too far in the past and it makes sense why because the person he came across was Regan I love the whole thing because you almost think it's a different character like oh who is this mysterious character we're going to meet them later on down the road and it turns out that person was Regan which I love that it actually disappointed Dimple he's almost like oh that's actually even sadder now knowing it was Regan that lying con man was the one they convinced I mean it was good advice but the fact is that Mob stands so ten toes down and so stubborn and resilient about that aspect because of Regan who kind of you know I, I mean I don't know like Regan recognizes like the damage he may have caused I mean but he's also done good because I think Mob because he's like, right, you never want to get too conceited about your powers and stuff. But now you're also like, yeah, but did Regan say that out of good of nature of like, oh, I want you to be a well-rounded human being and not have to reward, like, you know, just to be stronger or faster or smarter or you having powers that doesn't put you above anyone else. We're all on the same playing field, like being better at one thing or having one thing that another person should shouldn't like fundamentally make you better you know, we're all on this we should all fundamentally be on the same um playing field and we should kind of recognize it and mobs kind of lift his life based around that but like i said the negative side of like the pessimistic side of it you could be like well that could also be regan wanting to keep mob you know meek and easier for him to control you can look at it from that way because regan's a dick enough to do it like yes he's shown that he cares about mob but we've also seen like how how much of a con man and douchebag he is when it comes to his business that you're kind of like well mob is a part of that business plan so 
You can look at it from both ways. It just depends on when you want to look at it optimistically or pessimistically. I kind of sit, sit in both. I sit in the middle because I'm like, I kind of see it both ways. I could easily see Regan coming at it from the perspective of, oh, I'm trying to give you a good life lesson, but also I'm giving you a life lesson that heavily benefits me so that you never get too far out of my control. Because if you get so conceited, I'll lose kind of like what is kind of my moneymaker. But to be fair, it seems like he's able to kind of fraud his way through most of the stuff without needing mob but still mob is on the payroll so either way i love that it was actually dimple who tried to stop the fight because he was like right mob's not going to fight you so let's leave this as a draw but for taruki that would be even more of a slight against him by make it leaving it as a draw and so dimple's like all right that's going to be the case i don't have all my power because most of it got wiped by mob but I have enough here to put a snot-nosed brat like you in this place. And then he gets popped by Turuki. And it seems like all that Dimple is is going. There's nothing left now. And we do see Mob, like his emotions kind of, his ex the Mob explosion is up to 50%. And he's like, oh, it really pisses you off, doesn't it? And he was like, well, no, not really. Uh, because I love the flashbacks of like, you know... What was it? It was like, ooh, do you want to see what those girls, up those girls' skirts or whatever, x-ray vision? I can't teach you that because I don't even know about that, you perv. And then being like, oh, let me possess your body. And just like all these examples of Dimple not being a good guy. Just especially the last one being like, please let me possess your body. I'm just, I love that. And it's like, oh, like you need to use your powers more. But it was like, there's like, I love the comedy of it's supposed to be like, this would be like a uplifting pep talk montage, but instead it's just like, no, I'm Dimple being a selfish prick. But that still wasn't enough to send Mob over the edge, and Turuki decides to like swing him around even more. I just love the animation for this, especially like how this is our first dis really destructive battle in this series, and he's just like smashing mob throughout all these like walls and stuff i even love when he's using his powers he has to kind of like turn his ankles and point them towards each other i don't know why that's his stance but yeah it is but that's his battle stance and now he's messing mob up and just seeing like oh how much let's do an endurance test to see how much you can take and it's just like that moment he's putting pressure and like mobs face started morphing and just kind of got flown through the walls in the room but he starts throwing knives the moment they end up in the uh, uh, home ec room. And Mob, just defending himself, accidentally sends one of the knives back. And it uh, gives uh, Taruki a good close shave. And I even love, like, oh, hair on the top of Taruki's head, 0%. And that finally sent him over the edge. He took his tie off. And I guess using his psycho blast ability or whatever, he's able to make it his tie into a sword, which I thought was pretty dope. But it got really very existential where, like, Mob is like, oh, I know why you're so pissed at me, why you hate me so much. It's because you and I are the same. You're trying to push all this of like, right, you relying on my powers, it makes me stand better. My powers is better than anyone being smart or faster or stronger than me. My powers make me stand above everyone else. Everyone else is the loser except for me. But Mob is like, yeah, but the thing is, we're the same. We're both people who like, I'm trying to discover something in myself, potential in me outside of my powers. That's why I've been a part of the Body Improvement Club. But he's like, that's what you're afraid of. When you look at me, you see yourself that you need to reign supreme with your powers because you're scared of who you are without your powers. You're just like everyone else. You're just like me, a loser without those powers. And that sends him over the edge to the point that he started attacking Mob even without his powers. He started strangling Mob. I was like, that was because of how I was like, ooh, that's getting uncomfortable, especially the more like red mob is getting you're just like Ugh, that's you're just like Ugh, that's super rough and that's super dark and uncomfortable you knew mob would eventually unleash his powers especially because his percentage is going up more and more but for him he's fighting it because he's like no i don't want to do that if i use my powers it means what we once he as the narrator says it's a clashing of ideals of 
uh, Mob wants to prove that he doesn't have to use his powers, that if he's able to not use his powers and not fight back, it proves that he has begun to change, that he has something outside of his powers. And the same, but on the other flip side, Turuki, it was just like, if he's able to force Mob to use his powers, it's kind of like, right, we are the same. You can't do anything without your powers. You need them. That that That's all there is to you, which Mob is scared of. He doesn't want that to be all there is to him. But we also find out there is an associating trauma with it. Some time ago, and I guess what really made him start fearing his powers is there was an incident where him and his brother are getting bullied and he blacked out. And when he woke up, the bullies were bloodied and so was his brother. And his brother got bandaged up and everything was fine. It's interesting because I'm wondering how much they ended up telling their family. Because Mob only remembers the aftermath, like when he woke up after everything was all said and done. So I get the feeling Mob probably never said anything because Risu probably told him not to. Who knows? But that trauma is there. And just at that moment, like, Mob is just like, no, I can't let another incident happen. And he passes out. I was like, yo, too, if Taruki's not careful, he will kill Mob because he's trying to force Mob. And he's telling that line of, like, right, Mob, don't leave me all alone. And it's like, right, I finally found someone else who's like me. I know you're like me. I'm going to force you to use your powers. But Mob passes out. And it's like, it kind of was... Like, I mean, both of them walked away empty, as the narrator was saying, because neither one got what they wanted out of it. Because Mob didn't necessarily, like, not use his powers. It's just that he passed out. So it kind of wasn't his victory. Taruki wasn't able to force Mob to use the power, so it wasn't his victory. either. They both kind of walked away a loss. Except Mob wakes up, and he ends up in, not even in the same state that he was in, um, in episode three. This is him in a state we haven't seen before. It's kind of what the state we saw in the opening where he's just like a black silhouette. Uh, basically, and even the percentage is just question marks. It seems like, because Mob didn't even reach 100% before he passed out. It's something buried deep, deep down inside of him, as the narrator said of like, no, it was either the narrator or Taruki. I think it was the narrator saying like, right, this is something that should never be touched. And in that moment, he blows away Taruki's clothes and then starts absorbing not only Taruki's powers, but energy from the entire atmosphere and blows Taruki away along with rubble from the entire school as it's flying high into the sky and into the air. I was like, there's something like beautifully cinematic about it, but it's also like sad knowing like this is all a byproduct of Mob losing himself. And in that heartbreaking moment, where when Mob kind of wakes up and realizes like, oh my God, like I haven't changed. And in that moment, his percentage hits 100%. Whereas episode three, it was rage. This time it's sadness. So I guess every time Mob hits 100%, it's going to typically, or at least here in the first season, it's going to be 100% based on one focal emotion, not the multitude that makes up a person, but one particular emotion reigning supreme over others. And just in that moment, he's disappointed in himself. It's like, I haven't changed. I'm still the same person. I thought I was making progress. I thought I could show that I've made progress, but it was all for naught. And in a way, as the narrator says, like to kind of resist himself, to kind of get back at himself. of like, I could, I could do something different. He ends up using his powers to rebuild the school back. So... Taruki wanted to kind of apologize or say like this was his loss, but the people from uh, Black Vinegar wake up and they're like, oh my God, look what happened to his head. That's not going to happen to me. And they bailed. But even Taruki, when it's all said and done as the body improvement uh, club leaves with uh, Mob, it's like, okay, I, I can admit this was my loss. So Mob seems okay. Granted, he did go looking for Dimple, but wasn't able to find him. And ultimately he goes back home and he kind of asked his brother about it. It's like, right, that day, I'm sorry for what happened. But he's like, no, you didn't do that. They kicked me and I fell. Yeah, but all you did was protect me. But the moment he said that, because maybe I'm imagining, because I, I saw it from the corner of my eye, but I'm like, did his hand, did Ritsu's hand twitch on the doorknob when he, when Mob started talking about that? I felt like I saw it for a quick second, but I was like, mm, I, once again, I was seeing it out of my peripheral and I didn't rewind to check, but I, it felt like you saw his hand kind of like, like jitter a little bit um 
But he's like, no, like I had a feeling I was like, is he lying? And it turns out he did because we see there's news coverage footage of what happened, which no one knows what's going on. Just knowing like, oh, like the news is like, oh, this is something man. It's the probability of this being something man made. People are thinking, but Ritsu immediately recognized because his brother didn't say anything. But in conjunction with what his brother bringing up that story again, he's like, must have happened again because back then. Mob got knocked out and whatever it was awoken inside of him. And even Ritsu, it's like, that's that's not my brother. That's not Mob. It's something else. So despite wanting psychic powers and stuff like that, he does recognize there's something deeper in his brother. So I guess that's why he was like, when Mazato was talking about it last episode, he was like, what happened to my brother? He knows what's deeper inside of Mob and what, what could potentially rise to the surface. And what that, he also knows what that could do to Mob in the long run of like how much that trauma is there. Because he tried to tell Mob, hey, get over it. Nothing happened. He wants his brother to forget, but he now realizes and recognizes, oh, that's still a core of my brother. It's that trauma's baked in, just like like keeping his emotions, you know, trying to control his powers is about keeping his emotions. And so it's all like wrapped into one massive complex that is Mob's character. Like I said, just, I can only assume that, going back to what I was just saying, like, I can only assume that's why Mitsu, uh, Ritsu had that perspective when Mazada was, like, oh, talking about Mob, and he was like, well, what happened to my brother? Because he's the only one that really knows now. Well, now, so does um, Turuki. He did promise that he wouldn't use his powers against ordinary people. Now he's like, oh, I'm apologetic. I'm sorry. I think he has had a change of heart. So it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here he'll probably still be douchebaggy from time to time but he'll probably rein it all in because of Ma. but we'll have to wait and see but we'll also have to wait to see like was this really the end of dimple i was like oh was he really just gonna be like a three episode thing or i doubt that's the end i'm sure we'll see more of dimple but maybe i'm mistaken we'll have to wait and see uh, whether any like whether there's a fragment of him left or can Mob bring him back in some shape or form. It seems like we won't be following Mob next episode because the end of the episode ends with him getting sick and it seems like Ritsu is going to be like our main uh, point of view next episode or at the very least. So definitely going to be interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy. Be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.